Okay, so you've learned how to run an ANOVA and test whether or not there is an overall difference across different categorical values. In particular, is there a difference among uh, different levels of education in their income? What we want to do is go a step further now and find out if there are specific differences between pairs of categorical values. So, for example, do people with a full high school degree make more money than people with partial high school? Do people with some college make more money than those with some with a full high school degree? We can compare any two pairs of these for a specific difference. That's what we'll use a t-test for. So let's do this. Copy these columns. Let's paste transpose. Let's copy these again and move down one row and paste. So there are many different pairs we can compare. We can do partial high school to high school, partial high school to partial college, partial high school to bachelor's. We're not going to do all those because we believe there is some ordering here to education. I'm only going to compare one category to the other one next to it rather than do partial high school all the way to graduate. So what I did was I made a list of categories here. Oops, double click. There we go. Let's call this value one, value two. So we want a p-value, which you learned in the last video about ANOVAs, uh, we want to know what's the likelihood that the difference we find in high school to partial high school is due to chance or due to being there being some actual difference in the quality of education from finishing high school to only, sorry, finishing to only doing part of it. So here's how I do that. Equals t-test. So a t-test wants two arrays. An array is a list of values. So Partial high school gives us a list of values. I'm going to hold down shift command if you're on a Mac or shift control on a PC. Gives us the entire array of values for partial high school, comma. Now the entire array of values for high school. Next, it wants tails. Now I don't want to go into the detail of tails and type. Um, uh, for the sake of this class, uh, well, let me explain tails, but then I'm gonna I'm just gonna give you one value for type. Tails refers to whether or not we have a theory or a hypothesis about which one of these should be higher. Do we have reason to believe that one value should be higher than the other one? Yes, we do. We believe that more education will lead to more income. So we expect that high school will have a higher value than partial high school. If you have a theory and a logical reason argument for why one value should be higher or lower than the other, then you want one tail. Okay, if you have no idea and you just want to test and see is there a difference, but there's nothing that tells me which one should be higher, then you want two tails. But those are your only two values, one or two. So since we do have a reason to believe high school will make more income, we're going to stick with one tail. Now the advantage of that is that if you can have a theory or a reason to believe that one value is higher than the other, then you're more likely to detect statistical significance and get a significant p-value than if it's a two-tail or if you have no reason. So we're going to put one there. And then for type, this is where I don't want to get into the details with you. We're just going to choose one, two, or three. Um, I will show you what those values mean uh, just for your sakes here. Uh, tails type right here is the kind of t-test. Is it a paired t-test, two sample equal variance, two sample unequal variance? This is not a paired. It's a two sample. And the question is, do we think that these numbers are going to vary similar to how these numbers vary? Um, no, we expect there to be a difference, um, but compared to other contexts, yeah, maybe we would call it paired. However, we're going to keep things safe and stick with a three here every time. Whoops. Let me actually put that number up here. Three. There we go. Uh, and let's use that for every example in this class. That's a, a more conservative test. So we hit enter and the value that shows up here is not um, a T statistic for those who've had stats before. It's not um, an F statistic like we had in ANOVA. This is an actual P value. So if you remember from the previous video, any P value below 0 0.05 is considered statistically significant, meaning we think, meaning the difference between these two values is not due to chance. The difference between them is actually explained because high school is better than having a partial high school degree. So if that number was above 0 0.05, then we would determine, well, if a difference exists, it's only due to chance, and we can't say that high school truly is any better than partial high school. So just remember, below 0 0.05 is good because it means that, yes, there is something to be said here. There's something about high, a finishing high school degree that's better than a partial high school degree. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is just finish out these t-tests and compare all the other differences. Is partial college better than partial high school? See if you can pause and finish this for the rest of these and then come back and check your answers. But I'm just going to go ahead and shut up and uh, see how quickly I can finish these now. Okay, let's take a look. So notice we don't even know what the actual averages are for any of these. Let's go ahead and insert that now. And I'm going to put right here equals the average of this array. I should have done this one right at the very beginning. Let's copy that across. Now, it should be pointed out that there's a different number of each category. So I should actually, I'm going to pull this one down all the way to the length of the longest one so that I'll know that if I copy this across, it's going to hit everything. And the blanks are just going to be ignored by the formula. So here's our actual averages. Come on, bold. No, don't. Come on. There we go. So partial high school makes 34,000. High school, 46. Partial college, 54. Bachelor, 62. Yeah, more education leads to more income and then this tells us if that increase from here to here is statistically significant or is it just something that's due to random chance and we can't say that high school truly is better well because this is below 0.05 we say that that increase from 34 to 46 of 12,000 12.4 ish thousand it looks like yes that's statistically significant meaning it is better to get a high school degree than partial college sorry partial high school Next, the difference between high school and partial college. Now, I should point out, it doesn't matter at all which order I put these arrays in. I can put the higher one first, the lower one second, or I can reverse them. It doesn't matter as long as I do one and three right there. All right, next one. Uh, partial college increases by about 8,000-ish. That difference is a smaller difference from the previous one, but it's still statistically significant. It's a higher p-value. The difference is smaller, but we still say yes. That's because partial college is better than high school, not just due to random chance. Now it jumps up another 8,000. Okay, even though it's a similar jump as from high school to partial college, there are more cases. There's more data for those two. So because there's more data, we're saying, hey, we're getting the same value even with more and more and more data, which means it's getting less and less and less likely that that increase in salary is due to chance. As a result, that p-value drops even more because p-value depends on the number of cases. If we only had these first uh, 10 rows and that was it, then these p-values would be very high because we'd say, well, yeah, there is a difference, but you know, we don't have a lot of data. We can't say that this is truly reliable. The more data we get and the more we continue to find that difference, the more reliable that difference is, therefore the smaller the p-value is. All right, so here the increase is from almost 63,000 to 66, so it's a little over 3,000. Um, that is above 0.05, which means that, now let's interpret this correctly. It doesn't mean that there is no true difference between getting a graduate degree and bachelor's degree. All that's saying is that with the data we have, we can't say that getting a graduate degree is going to be a reliable, it's going to reliably get you 3,000 more all the time, uh, every time. Uh, the difference isn't big enough, and there's not enough data to say that with certainty. Now, let's say we gather more data, and the increase continues to only be about 3,000. Even if that never goes up, our p-value would eventually get below 0.05, because with enough data, we're saying uh, it's only a $3,000 increase, but it's happening often enough and reliably enough that we can say that, yes, it's due to a graduate degree being better than a bachelor's and not due to chance. So p-values are very dependent on the number of cases and the size of the difference between those, as well as another factor called variance, and we're not going to get into that in this class, but there's your t-test.